Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to process an image that is focused on early evening light. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's look and see what we're going to be doing. This is the image out of the camera. It's a little bit lackluster and our attention is all on the very light sky. And here's the final rendition of this image. Everything's a lot lighter and brighter in the center of the image. And we've really got a sense of mood. We can feel what it's like to be in this place. We've brought your attention right down to where all the action is. The most immediate problem with this image is this blown out sky. You can see here that it's blown out. So whatever we can do to get some detail back into the sky is really going to help it. The other thing that I'm concerned about is that because the sky is so light, the building and what's happening here on the street is really not the principal place where your eye goes to. Your eye is going to shoot all the way up here to these light, bright areas. And I want to bring you back a little bit more to what's happening outside St Paul's Cathedral. So what we're going to do is to start out by playing with exposure and highlights. Now to get the sky back in is going to require quite a lot of exposure reduction. And I'm not really happy with that because it's throwing everything else out too dark. So I'm going to put exposure back where it came from. And we're going to have a look in this image at highlights because highlights is really going to help us out. By dropping the highlights back down again, we can get some detail into the sky and also start to bring the attention of the viewer into these buildings. Having done that with the highlights, let's go and open up the shadows a little bit, just lighten and brighten the intermediate area of the image. And now we can get back some whites. So I'm going to Alt or Option drag on the white slide and you can see that we don't have any blown out highlights here at all. So we could even go up a little bit with our whites if we wanted to. You can also check the blacks. Well, we have the beginnings of some blacks in this image, but since it's been shot at dusk, I'd like a little bit more. So I'm actually going to take my black adjustment slider back to about minus seven here. Let's have a look now at clarity and vibrance. I'm going to increase clarity, which is increasing the mid-tone contrast in the image and giving us a little bit more of a effect on this building here. Now I think I've taken clarity up too much, so I'm just going to back it off a little bit. And then we'll have a look at vibrance. Again, vibrance is going to saturate under saturated colors. It's really going to help the middle of this image just brighten it up a little bit and give it a bit more punch. Now the next thing I'm going to look at is the buses here because we've got two what should be bright red London buses. And it would be really nice if they were a little bit more of the point of attention in the image. So I'm going to select the adjustment brush turn auto mask on. I'm going to size my brush down a little bit smaller. In fact, I'm actually going to turn auto mask off because I think I can do a reasonably good job of painting over these buses just manually without really needing to use the auto mask. What I'm going to be really careful of is A, that I don't pick up these people because I don't want to draw attention to them. Also, I don't want to pick up these lights which are very close to the top of the bus. I actually don't want to draw attention to those. I really want to just focus on the bus itself. So let's just work around here a little bit. Once I've got the outline of the bus picked up, now I can increase my brush size and just paint over the rest of it a little bit. I'm just going to again try and avoid this pedestrian that's standing or walking in front of the bus here. Okay, once I've got my first bus, let's go across here and I'm just going to treat both these buses the same. If it were you working on the image a little bit more slowly than I am, you may separately deal with these buses so that you can apply a different adjustment to each as they are lit slightly differently. You know, one's a little bit darker than the other. But for our purposes right now, this is going to be just fine. So again, just trying to pick up the bus and not the people. Going all the way around the edge here. And now I'm going to just fill in the middle. Now this is the second or third time I've processed this image. 
before I was working with the auto mask tool and this time I'm not working with the auto mask tool and I think the results are much better so um, with something like this a steady hand you probably do as good if not a better job than trying to get around it with the auto mask so let's just finish the back end of this bus off we can check our selection by turning the selected mask overlay on now you can do that by clicking the checkbox down here or you can learn the shortcut key which is the letter O and I suggest that shortcut key is probably a really good idea to learn that because you can use it quite a bit okay press the letter O again let's back out of here with the zoom tool by pressing the letter Z now obviously I've got exposure contrast and highlights way up this is just nonsense but it gives me a look at where I am working so I'm going to turn everything off by double clicking the word effect and now I am going to increase the exposure a little bit but just a little bit and maybe a little bit of contrast add a bit of clarity to lighten and brighten this perhaps even a little bit of sharpness I just want to see those buses coming through the image. Now one of the things that I saw when I actually shot this image was this was a play of green and magenta. There are some really green fluorescent lights in this building and yet some of the outside of the building and the light was very magenta. So I want to sort of play this off so that we do see the differences in colour one of the things we can do to help this along is to again try and kill the sky a little bit so I'm going to do a graduated filter I'm just going to click and drag and if I drag with the shift key held down then I can drag in a straight line and this is pretty good here except that of course we don't want any of these settings I'm just going to bring down the exposure here I'm going to bring down the highlights because we've already seen in the earlier that that works pretty well on this image and perhaps even decrease the shadows a little bit again trying to bring your attention into the middle of the image here what I have done is lost this tower but because we now have a brush inside the graduated filter we can erase the effect of the graduated filter in certain areas now I'm going to turn auto mask on here because that is the kind of place we would want auto mask turned on so I'm just going to click in a couple of places here to remove this tower from the effect of this graduated filter I'm thinking that's pretty good so I'm just going to click done now let's bring a graduated filter up from the bottom of the image just to darken the foreground a little bit again holding down shift as I drag up so that I'm dragging in a straight line and again double clicking on effect to reset the settings I'm going to walk the exposure down quite a bit I'm also going to darken the shadows again bringing your attention into the middle of this image this stage I still think the middle of the image needs something so I'm going to start by applying some sharpening this is a raw image so it will need to be sharpened and my camera shoots notoriously soft so let's just have a look here yeah, this is pretty soft too so I'm going to wind up the radius on this to about one and a half and just decrease the detail again the relationship between radius and detail is generally if you go a little bit higher on radius you want to drop down a bit on detail and vice versa alt or option drag on the mask and let's just see where we can sharpen well I want a fair bit of this image to be sharpened so I'm thinking that is a pretty good setting for the, my mask anything that's black is not going to be sharpened so some of the sky is out here and some of the foreground but everything else is going to be sharpened and I've applied a fairly high sharpening value I've done that because if we have a look in the image we'll see there's quite a bit of luminance noise here so I'm just going to increase the slider here on the luminance noise reduction it's going to soften the image because noise reduction always softens the image but we've got a fairly high level of well masked sharpening here so I think that's going to compensate for removing the luminance noise we're still going to have that sharpening effect in here 
just looking at the image I'm really pretty happy with it but you know what I'd really love to lighten this just a little bit in the middle so I'm going to go to the new radial filter well it's sort of new sort of not new it's been around in Lightroom for a couple of versions now so it's a circle or an oval filter and right now the outside of this circle is what's being affected so I'm just going to invert the mask so the inside is what's being affected and of course again we've got those settings that really are over the top so I'm just going to turn those off and I'm going to increase the feather so I have a nice soft feather effect I'm going to increase clarity here in the middle because increasing clarity will increase the perceived sharpness and it will also give it a little bit of a color boost so that may be all that we need and if it's not then we can add a little bit of exposure just the tiniest amount of exposure and then click done finally we'll just have a look at the temperature because we've got quite a bit of magenta through this image and I'm just wondering if we're not seeing the green quite as much because we've got a lot of magenta in it so I'm just going to drop down the magenta slider and that's making the green of these fluorescent lights just a little bit more apparent now to finish this off I'm going to do a couple of things firstly it's concerning me just a little bit that this image is not quite upright so I think the new lens correction feature here in Lightroom will help me so I'm going to basic and I'm just going to select full and just see what that does to the image well that's not happy is it so let's go to auto okay I think auto is much better this has straightened up this edge of the building let's go to off and then let's go back to auto you can see that's a really much nicer result and now that we've finished there let's go to the effects panel and let's just add a little bit of a vignette just in the very corners of the image again bringing our eye into the center of this image shot outside St Paul's Cathedral early in the evening in late autumn early winter so now that we've done all of that let's see how far we've come this is the shot out of the camera your attention's all the way up in the sky because that's the lightest area of the image and everything else looks just a little bit lackluster and here's the finished image well we've got lovely light here we've got a sense of excitement we've really got a sense of the action that's happening on the street here I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.